uh, hi everyone and welcome back so in the previous video we talked about uh, CQRS uh, pattern and how we are able to achieve it with the help of Nest.js which is a framework of Node.js now we will see all different other serverless technologies like you might have already heard about Lambda so we talked about different architecture patterns how we can fit all those things with the Lambda API Gateway SQS SNS I mean few AWS components either you replace it with the AWS component or Azure or maybe GCP okay so Lambda is actually uh, used for the serverless technology where you are just writing a functions the responsibility of execution and all everything is owned by the your infra vendor which is AWS I mean the cloud provider okay so what we will try to understand is the same set of architecture which we discussed in the microservices how we can achieve the same kind of functionality in the serverless world where we are using lambda api gateway maybe dynamo db your lambda is executing node.js code you are using sqs sns sqs trigger through lambda all those things are there so first theoretically i will not be explaining what is api gateway what is lambda okay these are just aws components api gateway is uh, playing an api gateway role here which is forwarding the request to the appropriate lambda here you can have a http mapping okay user will be connecting to a single source of truth which is api gateway and api gateway can forward this request to the http endpoint or a lambda okay or a particular ec2 instance okay so if we just talk about this simple architecture here this is the front end is getting served from the amazon s3 and cloud front okay here you can have a route 53 and you are actually serving the static files here we have a api gateway api gateway is talking to the lambda and lambda is talking to the dynamo db a simple architecture a plain and simple now there can be multiple lambdas playing for different services right so if i just talk about this is how it it works you will send a http request api gateway will map because in the api gateway you can map all these routes so for a forward slash hello it will check okay forward this request to this particular target lambda lambda will see what needs to be done lambda is nothing but a simple javascript function we will take a look onto the code what code you have to write it's just a simple javascript function which will take a input attributes input payload whatever you are sending in the get put post lambda will execute that code and maybe talking to the dynamo db or some other database and will do some action on that okay so how typically a serverless web application works right because the front end application you can easily serve from the s3 and cloud front okay so this is my cloud front and this is my s3 this is my front end application which can be easily served now for the back end either you can have api gateway or simple load balancer sitting here and then that is talking to the ec2 instance where you are using auto scaling and all or in the serverless world you will be using api gateway and aws lambda so in api gateway you did a mapping of all the rest endpoints which you are going to hit okay that is talking to the respective lambda and lambda will be talking to either dynamo db or some external interface and giving you data back so this can be a typical a simple web application architecture here we are using cloudfront is talking to the api gateway api gateway further talking to the lambda Lambda may be getting data from the Dynamo or from third party service. Okay, so other examples this we have already talked about, like a web browser. There can be a cloud front or S3 from that you are getting the site. If you want a social authentication, then you can use AWS Cognito. Otherwise, all the dynamic API uh, calls will go through the API gateway to Lambda to the Dynamo DB. So, here we are talking about all synchronous execution. Synchronous execution means request will go from the API gateway to Lambda and Lambda have to respond within the HTTP timeout by reading the data from the DynamoDB. What if you are going to use asynchronous execution by introducing SQS SNS? You can, you can publish something to the SNS, SNS can bind to SQS or some HTTP endpoint or you can send a message directly to the SQS. So in that case you will be talking about the asynchronous execution which is fire and forget you will send a message to the sqs which is a aws component simple queuing service 
and then, then there will be a subscriber who will be reading the data from the SQS, reading it and then processing that execution. So it can be simple like you have API gateway here. From the Lambda, you are writing something to the SQS. There is another Lambda trigger. Whenever any message comes to that uh, SQS, that Lambda gets triggered. So I will try to show that. This should be one diagram, yeah. This, I mean, these are just a random diagrams I collected from the web. Just to give more understanding. So Lambda can be triggered on different things. Lambda can be triggered with SQS, Lambda can be triggered through S3 file upload or Lambda can trigger from the API gateway. <coughs> so consider that here is an API gateway, forget about S3 for now. From API gateway, you got a request for the Lambda. Now Lambda can actually produce some payload and send it to the SQS. SQS will have a Lambda trigger. So you can configure a Lambda trigger on the SQS. This Lambda will read this message from the SQS and will do some processing on the dynamo and this is purely asynchronous communication happening here it is not happening over the time we will just send acknowledgement to the api gateway okay message has been written to the sqs now sqs will take this message forward asynchronously some lambda trigger will be there that will read it and there will be a retry retry three times okay lambda will try to process this message if there is a failure then it will it will sqs will still hold that message and if after three retries, there can be a rule, okay, you can actually put the, that message to the DLQ, dead letter queue, okay. If the read is successful, then you will just execute something on the Dynamo by reading and writing. And there can be another read interface where you have API gateway and the lambdas are mapped to the get, put, post, delete that are doing operations on the Dynamo table. So here we are writing, here we are reading same data from the SQS. So we can talk about simple request and reply mechanism using serverless or we can also talk about the SQS. And here it can be multiple SQS queues. Lambda trigger will can again further send it to the another SQS queue for another client where there will be another Lambda trigger which will read the message from the SQS. So this can be a chain reaction. For now we are just updating on the Dynamo over the time by just Maybe there are multiple messages are coming, multiple files are coming on S3 which is triggering the Lambda. Lambda will write it to the SQS and there is another Lambda trigger which will read it. Okay, so this is how we can actually think of asynchronous execution of the using serverless technology. Now we will go into the code and we'll see what Lambda has using serverless framework and how what is SQS and how to write a message to SQS. That's it because this is all on AWS. You can create API gateway, you can create a Lambda, put a function there, execute the Lambda, uh, provide the mapping on the API gateway for, for which particular request, what, which Lambda need to get executed. This I may cover in the AWS tutorials, but for the microservices, the same kind of microservice architecture we can also achieve through the Lambda. But there should be a use case, you want a server based, uh, architecture or a serverless based architecture. Okay. Uh, thanks everyone. Let's do some hands on in the next video.